everyone. My name is Tim Fiola. I'm a developer advocate here at Network to Code. And today we're going to be covering the Nautobot Shodan API plugin. This was the winning submission in Network to Code's internal hackathon in April of 2021, specifically focused on the Nautobot platform. Here's the agenda we'll be following. This was the team that produced the winning submission. All these team members worked very hard on this. So let's look at the problem statement. So an organization needs to understand the attack surface it presents to the internet. Internal groups can do scans, but for checks and balances, it's helpful to have an external set of eyes also looking for vulnerabilities uh, from an external point of view. So a low cost and low effort capability that would allow an organization to do this, to understand their attack surface they present to the internet would be very helpful. The solution is Nautobot Shodan API plugin. Uh, sh briefly, this plugin allows users to tag IP addresses in Nautobot. Then it uses a Shodan.io tool platform to understand the attack surface that each tagged IP address presents to the internet. This solution can be scheduled to run periodically. This is the proposition for our customers. So the plugin provides a high value, high transparency service at a relatively low cost. For the different uh, Shodan subscriptions, uh, one is around 900, the other one's around $60 a month. And the plugin itself is transparent because it is written in Python. This, address, this plugin addresses checks and balances within security. For example, in security, uh, one group would write a policies, one group would uh, enforce the policies. This allows one group to audit the other group for compliance. Another example would be a hi company hiring an outside pen test group to uh, probe their network for weaknesses. And then the, in that case, the outside group is auditing the inside group. The Shodan API plugin adheres to these security checks and balances because it allows a security group to scan their own ports for compliance, but also be checked by an external internet centric tool that can validate the internal scans. Network data is foundational for security, and not about has a wealth of network data, the connectivity information, the device configurations, the OS information. All of this can be leveraged in a security posture to help improve your security. Shodan API plugin feature set includes GraphQL and ChatOps capabilities. These are the roadmap features that we didn't have time to implement in the hackathon, but we think would be very helpful uh, in the future. So the first one is to expand the search capabilities to get, get a more holistic view of vulnerabilities. So not just CVEs, but uh, other types of vulnerabilities as well. You can use Nautobot's uh, OS information to get the OS information for each network element, then query Shodan.io for vulnerabilities asso uh, associated with that OS. You can use Grafana to vulner, excuse me, to visualize the vulnerabilities. We can expand our chat ops integration, and we can also include other scanner integrations, for example, Nessus, to get a to expand the breadth of scan types that this plugin can do. This concludes the presentation part of this video, and now we'll turn it over to my counterparts for a Nautobot Shodan API plugin demo. Hello, everyone. My name is Hugo. I'm the Network Automation Engineer at Network to Code. We are going to be going over a quick demonstration on the Shodan plugin that we've developed for Nautobot. Uh, we'll just quickly glance over uh, the exploit list for our plugin. And here's just going to be some of the CVEs that we've gathered and the uh, host vulnerabilities. This is a list of all the CVEs found per IP address. Um, we click on an IP address and we can get some detail about the CVEs uh, that it's shown and reported back. Uh, one of the ways that the worker is making this API call to Shodan 
is by this public tag that we have assigned to this IP address. And that is telling Dart to schedule worker to go and fetch the data for this specific IP address. Uh, what we're going to do from this point, we're going to remove some of these database objects that are currently populated on our not about object uh, instance. And we're going to show you guys in real time. We're going to populate the data back in, and we're going to have a Jeremy who's going to speak about the RP schedule worker next. So, Jeremy. All right. So, if you'll jump back over to the uh, exploit list just to make sure that we are all clean and empty. Um, all right, cool. We're, I'm racing to the finish line with the worker because it, it, it's in a scheduled fashion. All right. So, now what I'm going to talk about is how we've introduced a scheduling component within Notabot. Notabot has the ability to work, have a Redis worker and a Redis queue out of the box uh, with, an, with your normal deployment, but it doesn't have the ability to have that scheduled aspect. It's something that it's very easy to implement, uh, and that's one thing that we've done with this plugin. So let's jump over to the admin panel within Notabot. Inside the admin panel, the very first section you're going to see is a Django RQ scheduler. And in there, you have the ability to have cron jobs, repeatable jobs, and scheduled jobs. The one that we're going to be talking about today is going to be the cron jobs. So if you dive into the cron jobs, uh, what we're going to see is the showed and query job that's already been predefined. Inside the showed and query job, we're going to see a couple of tidbits of information. We're going to see the name. Doesn't necessarily matter. That name could be Fubar, Fubar Baz. Doesn't matter. Uh, what matters, though, is that the callable that we're calling is the actual function that was defined to query Shodan. So it's inside the, uh, the plugin, it's in the worker file, and the function is called query Shodan. And we want to make sure that it's enabled. Uh, for the settings, we're going to be dropping it into the default queue. Uh, no there's no need to really create a separate queue or work with different queues like that. We can just use the default queue. That's what the uh, default Redis worker is going to be pulling from. Job ID, nah, it doesn't necessarily matter for what we're talking about today. And then we get into the cron string, string. And so inside the cron string, we're going to see that we have uh, a three minute cron. So every three minutes, the, uh, what's happening is the actual Redis scheduler, the RQ scheduler is dropping a job inside the Redis queue. And what's happening behind the scenes is that the Redis worker is just sitting there ready, like I'm ready to do some work. I'm gonna do some work. And it's attached to that Redis queue. And it's listening to all the different uh, queues that are that it's available to it so our job to pop in for it to be consumed. So behind the scenes, the RQ scheduler is its own separate process. And the only job of the RQ scheduler is, is just to pop those jobs into the queue when they're ready to run. And every three minutes, the RQ scheduler is gonna be popping that job into the queue. And then the Redis worker is going to be grabbing that job out and running that job to fruition. So the pub sub model, we have the RQ scheduler publishing and we have uh, to, to a queue. And then we have the worker subscribing to that queue and pulling it out and working it. All right. So now if we jump back over to the UI or we should be able to see that everything is there. I'm going to hand it back over to Hugo to dive a little bit more into the uh, underlying plugin. Thank you, Jeremy. So let's take a look at the host vulnerability list. Um, like I said before, here's a full list view of all the vulnerabilities found for IP address. <clears throat> so a couple things we can do from here. So let's take a look at a particular CVE. Uh, here, the Shodan API returned back some valuable information for us. We can get a quick description um, when this was created and what the actual CVE is. Um, and then we can take it a step further and go into this particular CVE and get some um, awesome output and some detail about the CVE. So if we go back to our instance here, let's just quickly recap on the exploit list. Um, here's just going to be a full list of all the CVEs found. And if we go and go back to this um, post vulnerabilities and go to our specific IP uh, and kind of review what we're seeing here. So once we get to this object, we see a quick a quick output here telling us, okay, the, this, this IP address is reporting these CVEs. Um, and just to kind of highlight uh, what we did to um, have the RQ worker fetch the data for this IP, we did have to assign this public IP tag. Um, so from here, we can also dive into CVE and get some more information. So uh, yeah, that's a general, 
uh, use case of walking through the UI. Um, so for now, we'll take a look at some other awesome features that we've implemented into this plugin, and I will hand it over to Dr. X. Thank you, Hugo. So I'm Xenia. I'm a network automation engineer at Network to Code. And what I'm going to show you is one of the super awesome new features of Notabot. And that feature is GraphQL. So GraphQL is a network database that shows relationships, edges, uh, between objects, nodes, like in a network. And uh, what we're going to be doing here uh, is we're going to be using uh, a GraphQL query to show all the Shodan exploits and uh, the IDs um, that are correlated to these exploits and the description of the exploit, as you already saw, saw in the GUI, together with uh, host data related to host data that is the hosts that have these exploits. So with these few lines, uh, 11 lines of code, you can nicely get this awesome result, uh, which shows relation between Shodan exploits and host data. Wait, so I just want to get one thing straight. What I'm looking at here is a custom query. So I, I, I'm not the smartest bulb in the box. Uh, I, I'm not the brightest crayon. So what, I, what I'm, what I'm kind of hearing is I had the ability to just write a couple lines of a query and get information back. And that may not even be what the actual API makes it look like. This is me customizing what I want my data to be. Because I'm super smart. I'm not the brightest bulb, but I know I'm super smart. I know that I want my data in a certain way. And I can pull out any relations. I can pull out a relation to anything that's related or, or try and get this additional information. Is, is that what I'm, is that, am I understanding that right? Yes, you got this exactly right, Jeremy. So this awesome feature actually can save you tons of lines of code, which because you're smart, you don't want to write too many lines of code. You want to write few and simple ones and all of these good things. So yes, absolutely. If I don't have to write a custom plugin to emit the API data the way that I want it. So I'm, I'm out of the business writing custom APIs on top of someone else's custom payloads, and I can just write a query. I don't have to write any custom Python code. I just have to write a query. That's right. Well, the other feature that I'm going to show you is the chat ops uh, part of our plugin, because you cannot have a Notabot without a chatting feature. So here we have our Slack channel where first we're going to type uh, the backslash showdown to just show uh, something like a help uh, set of um, lines. In this case, all of the commands that are available to us to run uh, through Slack. And the one that we have implemented here is the get Shodan CVE that gets all the hosts that have a specific vulnerability. So if we execute that, we will see that the chatbot is pretty chatty and it gives us all of these uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, that's another uh, very cool uh, feature at the tips of your hands because we all like our chat uh, clients. Finally, uh, something that you would be very interested to know is that the docs are public in docs no pineapple dot pizza and uh, there will be a read only uh, password in those docs so that you can enjoy this demo and explore on your own uh, the features that were just presented and check out and um, see uh, the potential uh, of this uh, awesome plugin and that demo will be open until the end of June. With that, I'm going to pass it back to Jeremy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. X. I'm super excited about this. One thing that, that really stands out to me is I was a network, network engineer by trade. And there was nothing worse in my mind to sign in on a Monday morning after having such an amazing weekend 
to see a nasty gram from cybersecurity saying that one of my WAN interfaces was picked up by some vulnerability scanning tool and I've got to remediate this now because it's a critical, it's a high. And it's been there for three months and they're just now emailing me. Well, shoot, I wish I could have found this earlier. I wish I could have found it and fixed it before I got that nasty gram because I don't like nasty grams. I had an amazing weekend. I was on the beach in Puerto Aransas. I was having an amazing time. I didn't want that nasty gram. So the great thing about this is that we have the ability to, uh, to collate the data into a centralized solution. We're able to expose these vulnerabilities from these outside scanning engines to the network engineers. So the network engineers can be able to see the underlying hosts that have vulnerabilities, see the IP addresses that have vulnerabilities. In this specific example that we're showing, we see that this IP address is assigned to a physical interface on the AWS EC2 Nautobot host. So it may not be a network engineer, maybe a server engineer, maybe an application owner. Someone giving you the ability to see exactly what CVEs are exposed, uh, I'm sorry, have been found on your underlying application or the host that, you, that you're maintaining. Because let's be real, I don't know if I've ever worked in a place where cybersecurity said, here is access to the cybersecurity scanning engines, be it Nexus, Nexpo, Shodan, XYZ, FUBAR, I never got access. I evidently am not a very trustworthy person. They never let me see. They would just send me my nasty gram, but they would never let me see what, I, they would never let me query. So by doing this, this gives me the ability to see this information earlier. It gives me the ability to act on things earlier. And it's able to expose the data closer to the end user or the consumer of those, uh, uh, of vulnerability management. Another great feature as well, that just kind of blows my mind is let's say I am on the beach in Port Aransas sipping on, uh, on a nice fruity drink, which I love to do. And I am reading the news because that, that's, that's who I am. And I'm scrolling through and I'm seeing some insane day one or day zero vulnerability that just came out for vendor XYZ that I have all across my WAN. And you know what? I can't, I can't enjoy my fruity drink unless I jump over to Slack and or jump into, uh, figure out, am I vulnerable? Do I need to stop what I'm doing to go patch all of these devices on my WAN? So without getting out of my chair, without booting up my laptop, without having to figure out how to sign into Nautobot, because you know what? I've had a couple fruity drinks and I don't know if I remember where my password's stored. I can just pull up Slack on my phone. And I can very quickly and easily copy paste the CVE from whatever news source that I had and run my simple chat command and get this information exposed back to me via a chat solution. I'm not acting upon it with chat, but it gives me the peace of mind and the ability to query and get that, that contextual information back to me a lot easier and a lot quicker. And I don't have to worry about ruining my vacation, freaking out about a day zero exploit on vendor XYZ. It's already, I, I, I can just query it from my phone, which everyone who knows me knows my phone never leaves my side and I don't have to worry. I can go back to drinking my fruity drink and enjoying a beautiful day at the beach. This is super awesome. I love this. And I love the potential of being able to integrate not just with Shodan, but with all different types of vulnerability scanning engines. It could be something internal like Nexus or Nespos or external solutions like Shodan. And there's the, the, the possibilities are endless. I had a tremendous time in this hackathon. We had one of the best teams. And you know what? I'm the team lead. I am super partial. So it's not just we had one of the best teams we had the best team. And the reason I know we had the best team, we won. And having the, the completeness, having the chat ops component, having all this contextual information adds so much value and I love it. And as Dr. X mentioned, we're going to be releasing this as a public demo until the end of June. Uh, all of the uh, access information is gonna be in the documentation. The, the docs are hosted at docs.nopineapple.pizza. The Slack registration, so if you want to play with it in Slack, it's going to be slack.nopineapple.pizza. So if you want to have fun with it, be my guest. It's totally there for fun, just to enjoy and see how you can reimagine how you can better interact with your network and get some more information. All right. I think at a certain point, I need to go refill my fruity drink. It's been wonderful. I love this. I love what the team has done. And I'm so proud of everyone that worked on this. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend, enjoys their week, and 
has a, has a wonderful time working with Nautobot. Thank you.